Hey guys, Space Guru 5 here. Man, I just keep on popping into these things, huh? Well, no matter. I was asked to contribute my own testimony about V here, and I've elected to go through with it so that the record is more permanent and more visible. A lot of this is taken from my twit longer event about V in August 2020, but I've updated some of the details and added some more recent events so it's more relevant. Before I get into this, I just want to go on record by saying my heart goes out to V's other victims, as well as his former friends. I was literally shaking when I first wrote this two years ago, so it all just needs to come out now. All I ask for is understanding, maybe even compassion or sympathy, even though I don't think anyone truly will understand me. Evidence is scant for much of this. Many of these things have been lost to time, so for a lot of this you'll just have to go on my word and the word of others. I myself am not a fan of hearsay, but in this instance I've been left with no choice. Just know that I would never put something out there against someone if I didn't know it was true. Okay? Okay. I met V when he was still Sketch TB in 2017. I don't remember exactly how we crossed paths, but I know it had to do with our mutual respect for and inspiration from Youngblood Fantasy 91. I thought of him as a quirky but all-around likable guy. In fact, I'd be lying by omission if I didn't state that even as late as 2020, we still had some friendly interactions with each other. But even so, now I realize that the first warning signs are right there in front of me. The first issue came up when V tackled Kungi Muller. From what I remember, he is a YouTuber who had high dreams of being a late night talk show host, although I don't think he was too receptive to criticism at that time. V kept on arguing with and commentating on him, to the point where Kung actually felt uncomfortable, and at that point V decided that the best way to get him to calm down was to keep talking to him. Several people and I told him to leave him alone. I don't know if he ever listened, because this is when I stopped paying attention to it. Then came the Alt CC, particularly Dylan Thomas. If you don't know or remember, the Alt-CC was a commentary group that was made to address problems they saw with the SCC of that time. However, its message wasn't taken too seriously, especially considering its image and that some of its members joined just to talk shit about the SCC. Dylan himself had been picking fights with other commentators throughout 2016 and 2017, such as Doodle Tones, Boonslayer, Loudon, and in fact, me. If you want more information about his spat with me in particular, you can check out my 10 years of Coyote comms video, but for now, let's just keep the focus where it is. At some point in early 2018, V and Dylan were talking things out privately, with the end result being Dylan's commentaries all being mirrored on a secondary channel called Table for One, and Dylan's commentary channel being deleted. V wound up saying something like, I put a stop to the Alt-CC revolution in a long since deleted server. Around the same time, I was talking some mad shit about Dylan over his CC Bloodsports videos, which led to V scolding me in the gym of 99. It very much seemed like he thought I was fucking up his plans. These incidents have just stuck with me ever since, because they both seemed a little out of character to me. Oh, how naive I was. I should note that Dylan went on to strike down the mirrored videos sometime in the latter half of 2021. Some drama surfaced about Dylan that ultimately led to his channel's deletion in 2022. One thing I forgot to mention back then is that I remember Dylan at one point publicly begging V to leave him alone, and this was on Twitter. Apart from V's arguments with Siphon in February 2018 during the whole Avatar Gate ordeal, things were generally silent between the two of us. That is, until... January 2019. My commentary on Eero's Q goes live. Near the end, I said, try making a good commentary. The CC doesn't need shit like this. V is the sole reason why that cult will forever haunt me. Even as late as December, he kept on holding it over my head and saying, that doesn't seem very welcoming, does it? Even during discussions that had nothing to do with it. At the end of January, I made some really ignorant statements about me too, which prompted a very negative response from multiple people, including V. In direct response to V, I acknowledged my mistake and finished it with a brief my bad. V got very up in arms about this, to the point where he got his Neo Alt TC sock account to further criticize me. An odd move considering the Neowald CC was just as much of a parody as CC conspiracies. He also kept on hanging this over my head and saying I never really apologized for it, even though I did at least twice. This takes your age well. February 2019. The Cloud Palace releases a com on the CAM project. Neko Koda noticed an NSFW that snuck in by mistake, and when V caught wind of it, he just flipped the fuck out. I don't remember everything he screamed for, but I know the major one was that NSFW was being shown to minors in the first place. V's actions left the video's editor, Slayer, permanently scarred. I bring this up because I called it out, albeit without naming names, in my deleted Spite Toxicity and Their Effects on the CC video from March. 
Instead of acting like reasonable adults, they elect to gossip about people in as many places as possible, even going so far as using Twitter as their public slam book on certain users. This has done nothing but fuel a culture of animosity. What makes this even more distressing is that they themselves don't seem to realize what they're actually doing, and they end up projecting their toxicity onto other people. Want a good example of this? Let's talk about the dramas surrounding the Cloud Palace, since I am part of the group and have personally witnessed them. The most recent brouhaha stemmed from the Cloud commentary on the CAM project, which was criticized en masse for a point about not crediting fan artists and the accidental inclusion of a picture of Undertale Echi. As bad as both of these issues were, things were escalated further when some people decided to inform people beyond the CC about what was going on, despite them having no real need to know, as if it was some sort of cause célèbre. These actions were undertaken by people who have a genuine vendetta against the Cloud Palace and Doodle Tones, which was massed under the guise of the porn picture of violating YouTube community guidelines. While it's true that YouTube prohibits sexual content, YouTube does take into account whether or not it's the main focus of the video and if it's used for the purpose of sexual gratification. It's a case-by-case -case basis, and so we can never really know for sure which videos will be removed and which videos will be age restricted once flagged for containing said content. After all, the algorithm is notoriously exploited by so many people. Realistically, the video would have just likely been age-restricted since the picture wasn't even the main focus of the video. It was just used as an avatar picture for a brief moment and it wasn't even included on purpose. Even though Doodle Tone was eventually age-restricted and then removed the video, this doesn't change the fact that certain people decided to stir up further controversy beyond the borders of the CC, using their own ideas about YouTube's policies as a rallying banner and as damage control. That's really fucking shady, people. V discovered this video and left a lengthy diatribe in the comments effectively trying to shift the blame elsewhere and shaming me for not naming names. I don't remember all of it anymore, but I know he brought up something Doodletoads had said years prior and acted like that somehow invalidated any of my complaints. I never heard anything else about it since. And yes, V screaming about how wrong it is to show NSFW to minors is extremely ironic in hindsight, isn't it? In late February, V rebranded his Twitter to V for Vendetta and made a completely obvious remark about how he'd tear down the Cloud Palace in the bio. V responded to the concerns by stating he had no ill will towards the Cloud Palace, and that it was merely a stunt to promote his next commentary. He also stated the following, I'm sorry for the scare. I'm not having some malicious vendetta towards you guys. It's just some teaser stuff for my commentary on you guys. It's just going for an eerie tone of sorts. I although don't have the highest opinion of you all as I see the group as poorly managed on many fronts. To answer this clearly, no. This isn't me being angry at you guys. The only anger that I had is vented out now, and it was done in a bad manner, and don't worry, I'll remain calm throughout the rest of our public or personal interactions unless you give me a reason not to be, i.e. being uncivil or not being calm yourself for the most part. But everyone knows how full of shit that is now, and I'll explain how in my next tidbits. On the 19th of March 2019, V found his way into the Dynasty of Idiotic Eccentrics, or DIE for short. The group was initially set up as a hub for aspiring commentators to grow their craft, while also engaging in good-natured banter with the Cloud Palace. When V came to the picture, he took this inch and went more than the extra mile with it. He would talk all sorts of smack about the SCC and the Cloud Palace and its members, making whatever Cloud Palace members were in die extremely uncomfortable. I was one of the people he talked about, so let's get into that. June 2019. An artist known online as Neve Fluffybutt yells at me and threatens to sue me for parodying one of her works. I made a thread showing the exchange, with all names and icons blurred out except for mine and explaining why those responses were unprofessional and unjustifiable. I mentioned fair use because, as I said before, I had parodied her work, albeit without credit. V found my thread and decided he should lecture me about fair use. He also dragged the Cloud Palace in the whole ordeal, even though they had literally nothing to do with it. That was the moment I blocked him. I found out later that V knew how intellectually dishonest this was, and he only did this so he could provoke a response. This dude was so addicted to arguing and finding excuses to send entire goddamn PhD theses to people that he'd throw anyone under the bus to get it going. Glad to know I was just a fucking object to him. Not too long after he posted his thread, V posted another thread addressing his heightened aggression. In it, he explained that he was struggling to cope with the imminent loss of his grandmother, and that those struggles were making him lash out. Loss really sucks when it happens to you, that much is true. But at the time, I read it as him throwing his dying grandma under the bus right after being really aggressive towards the club pals just because I was in it. I took my impression as gospel and claimed as such later that year during a private event, which we're going to get to in due time. To be clear, and for the record, I was wrong to jump the gun like that, and I'm still sorry that I did. That was none of my business, and I had no right to meddle in it. 
V was so keen on anyone and anything related to commentaries in the Cloud Palace that some people were legitimately afraid to release more content. There was absolutely this great sense of dread that V would pick out any singular flaw and start his one-sided arguments about why he's right and why you're wrong. He played really dirty, and I know of at least one person who gave up commentating completely because of his underhanded tactics. Now that doesn't seem very welcoming, does it? You know what else isn't very welcoming? August 2019. V and his friends go around raiding and spamming Discord servers, which is against TOS by the way. The one I heard of was Michael is here's server, and yes, I still have the proof for this. From what I remember, this was due to some bullshit drama involving Dan Stein. We'll get back to this one. I would like to go on record and state that these individuals no longer stand by their past actions. It's fucking sickening to think that V was so good at manipulating children. October 2019. Horace Tomei's pedophilia and grooming accusations got mentioned on the CC wiki, and V decided that the whole SCC was responsible for Horace's actions, even though he had his own page up on that same wiki until it was shut down. Not to mention, the accusations against Horace eventually turned out to be shaky because the evidence was peripheral. I eventually vented about the raids in another server, just shattered at the realization that the V of that time was no longer the V I thought I once knew. Lo and behold, his then-boyfriend, now ex-husband, got a hold of it, and V ended up leaking it while spouting lie after lie about me. Still hanging the Neuro's commentary over me. Still hanging the Me Too ran over me. That's when he found out I blocked him, which prompted him to call me a horrible person. Again, this takes sure aged well. At the time, I really tried defending myself and countering V's claims, but it was no use. Nobody believed me, and I got pushed aside and insulted. Neko Koda, one of V's many victims, even had the temerity to lecture me about how I should shut up about things I don't know, because I'd mentioned in my event about how V made Koda suicidal. V's word was winning so I had no choice but to just shut up and go on yet another hiatus, and just let the fire burn through its wood. It was during this time that I penned the song Nice to Meet You Again, which became the opening track to my Obscured Sorrows EP in 2021. I've admitted for years that this song is about V and the pain he caused me, but for artistic reasons I also made parallels to my relationship with my mood disorders. I sung about how I couldn't avoid me no matter how much I tried, how I had nowhere to hide because he leaked my private vent, how I will never escape my past, how I was shunned and rejected upon defending myself, and asking myself why I even bothered trying in the first place. It was a cry for help, and like everything else, nobody seemed to notice it. Story of my life. Nothing else happened between him and I until January 2020. Neko Koda made a CC rant video, I commentated on it, Lunatic the Game commentated on both of our videos, Database Productions commentated on Koda's video, and then that was the end of that. Nobody was talking about it anymore. That is, until V decided enough is enough, 
I made an unscripted two-hour ramble fest posing as a commentary on Coda, myself, and Pink Robot, from a completely unrelated discussion, I might add. Then he went and deleted it along with the rest of his commentaries two days later, claiming he wanted to move on because of anxiety. Sound familiar? So here we are. Pedophilia, sexual harassment, and grooming allegations come barreling V's way in late June 2020, and V just completely digs his own grave further, ultimately deleting his Twitter account in early August. Days later, his husband makes his own testimony against V and implies that they are getting a divorce. It's revealed that V was just as manipulative and abusive towards his own husband as he was to the people around him. It also comes to light that V had been cheating on his own husband multiple times. And so, once everything was beginning to settle, Dai kicked out V, amends were made, and the community did its best to heal from all the damage he caused. As far as people knew, this was the end. Except, as with anything having to do with V, this wasn't really the end. On the 16th of August 2022, Word got out that V-Omega resurfaced using an alt account and harassed Nekokoda and Studio Needing More. He used the alt CC moniker because he clearly is still obsessed with that defunct commentary group. Even more disturbingly, he seemed to know way more about the community's ongoing events than someone who had been away for two years really would know, indicating that he'd been watching the community from afar this whole time. For instance, he knew way too much about Justice Sylveon, aka Doodle Clones, who had been harassing Doodle Tones throughout 2020 and 2021, and Studio Needing More, who as far as I know hadn't been discussed until early 2022. Let's remind ourselves that V was someone who leaked a bunch of information about Doodle Tones to Kiwi Farms, some of which was incorrect because he elected to push a narrative. Remember that V was very obsessed with Doodle Tones and anyone connected to her. Neko Koda was hospitalized not too long after V publicly harassed her. It's not my place to go into details, but let's just say she was in a serious mental crisis and needed to be taken care of immediately. Bear in mind, V had sexually harassed her years beforehand in person. As someone who's survived his own mental health crises before, I could say that nobody deserves to be driven to such a drastic state, and I personally hope Koda will recover. There's no doubt that the damage V caused will last long after everything is said and done. Above all else, the testimony should serve as a warning. Don't engage with V Omega at any cost. Don't let him into your life. This degenerate piece of shit is a menace to society, and should absolutely be locked up for life. The day this happens will be the day when this world becomes just a little bit safer. It's time to put V Omega in prison. I'm Space Guru 5, and as always, take care.